Ah, 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 And I'm just telling you, the guy, is, the guy is delivering a message to Liverpool fans. What's the message? For a long time, you have been disturbing him, and you have decided to go for Alison Becker. So Carlos says, "Okay, now if I'm Judas Iscariot, I am going to betray you everywhere." <laughs> Dortmund beat Liverpool. You should have seen the performance. No, that, wow! I, I saw the highlights. I just watched uh, the highlights on YouTube, uh, and it was terrible. I mean, what kind of? Giveaways are those. It's, it's, part of it's as if he gave the goals as a birthday oh. present to Borussia Dortmund. But what should he do to you? Or did he connive with? Why are you continually bashing the guy? Why? Ah, no, if you perform like this, why should he bash you? So okay, so you have taken Alison Becker. He says that the rest of the games, if you don't know, and you drop in FA Cup, you are dead. Becker, hurry up, Becker, hurry up. It's a big hurry up, Carlos. Thank you very much. We even put Danny Ward ahead of him. You know, our first string goalkeeper, we put him ahead of him. Anyway, George has more details to those stories in sports and the sports center is brought to you by MTN. Welcome to the new world. Standard Chartered Bank here for good. F Pack blows your pain away. Multi TV just thrills. Also, Carbell Gold Energy for winners. MTN Momo is the easiest and fastest way to do all your financial transactions. You can use MTN Momo to send money, receive money, pay your bills, pay school fees, salaries, allowances, and also pay for your goods and services at any merchant point. Observe the three golden rules to keep your MTN Momo account safe and secure. One. Don't keep your MTN Momo. Sorry, don't give away your MTN Momo pin. It's your secret, so keep it very, very safe. Number two, don't give away MTN Momo transaction details. And three, perform all your MTN Momo transactions yourself. Keep your account safe and secure, and continue to enjoy fast and convenient MTN Momo experiences. Um, dial star one seven zero hash and just Momo it everywhere you go. Now, MTN has opened its doors to all Ghanaians to buy yellow shares. So just walk into any Standard Chartered Bank branch across Ghana and purchase your MTN yellow shares at the offer price of 75 pesos and a minimum of 10 shares. You don't have to bank with us to enjoy the service. This offer lasts until July 31, 2018 at Standard Chartered Bank. We are here for good. And we're here for sports. Coming up on the Sports Centre, the legend, Professor Zuma Nelson, was well celebrated over the weekend. who is me, who is like me, you know, we feel happy for uh, what I've achieved, you know, through God, you know, I've become uh, one of the greatest uh, boxers in Africa and the world, you know. And at the age of 29, Masoud Ozil has retired from international football. So close to it. And then he's more forward. Here's Ozil with the opportunity. Lovely skill. Ozil and still fabulous. Arsenal from two down, lead 3-2. Winston Reid didn't get there in front of Alexis Sanchez, and they're in here, Arsenal, and it's a tap-in for Mesut Ozil, and Arsenal's early superiority pays off. Also, Francesco Molinari has become the first Italian to win a major, holding off a pack of star names to claim the Open Championship. Italy, hold the front page. It's in for birdie from Molinari. A clenched fist salute from the Italian. He hugs his caddy. He's eight under par, and he might just have done enough to become the first Italian to win any major. He waves his white cap to the stands. Everyone in Carnoustie's on their feet. And we have you covered on what your favourite clubs are up to in pre-season. More reactions to come, but first, the oldest member of the beleaguered Ghana Football Association Executive Committee, MNS Doe, is dead, aged 72. He was rushed to the hospital yesterday afternoon in Cape Coast where, you know, MNS Doe was the only person to have served as regional football association chairman for the central region. Asante Foucault is spokesperson of the regional football body and says Ghana football has lost the library. Um, his loss is a big blow because um, he's the repository um, of knowledge in terms of the laws that governs um, our football in Ghana. Um, Mr. Do is one person who is very strict in terms of um, his job. Um, he is very diligent. Um, he reads a lot. So he knows a lot about football. Um, he has also served on various um, capacities in terms of um, CAF. He was a match commissioner for CAF. He started from the coach division. From the coach division, um, he moved to division um, division two before division one. 
he has also managed Abyssinia Dwarfs. Um, Abyssinia Dwarfs. So you know that um, from the football circles, um, from the from the coach level to the Premier League level, he's been an administrator and a stilt one, of course. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Now, Accra Hearts of Oaks CEO Mark Noonan has described the current football situation in Ghana as unfortunate, one that truly saddens him. For close to two months now, there's not been any football-related activity in the country due to the outcome of the Anasa Remeyaw Anas Exposé. Noonan wants a quick resolution to all issues so football can return. A profound sadness in that um, football is so important to so many people here and not to have it and to have the crisis and the, 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 the circumstances surrounding that crisis is a really, really sad thing. And I think about the players um, whose dreams are being put on hold right now and aren't able to play the matches and to showcase their talents. I think about the fans. I think about clubs like ourselves um, who rely on revenues from matches and things of that nature. Uh, we're all victims of this greed tempered with hope then there's a huge opportunity to become one of the best leagues in, in Africa. Now the Black Princess has wrapped up their preparations here in Ghana yesterday with a 7-0 win over Army Ladies in a friendly at the Ghana Man Soccer Center of Excellence in Prom Prom. The team had to make changes to the initial plan of, of leaving Ghana for Spain last Friday for a training tour. According to our checks, they will leave today. And ahead of that, Coach Basig is counting on the or counting the importance of the tour going into the competition. It's very important and it's going to help us a lot because um, you know we'll have a feel, we'll get an exposure, and um, uh, with the facilities available and then also with the weather is similar to France so that's why uh, they decided that we should go to Spain and then we'll play a high profile match or matches before we get there so by that time we are okay. Right, let's do boxing now. And Ghana's Rafael Mensa failed in his quest to win a nice world title for the country after he was decisions by Alberto Machado to easily retain his WBA World Super Featherweight title in Las Vegas. Now, all three judges called the fight one two or one twenty one zero seven for Machado. Machado definitely was making the defense or the first defense of his title. He won last October from Jesu Corrales. Back home, a suspected dislocated right shoulder did not prevent a masterful Patrick Alligator I from, you know, definitely doing the good job and getting the National Super Featherweight Championship title from the grasp of defending champion Abraham Osei Bonsu. But we know it was a night where everyone was celebrating the 60th birthday of Professor Azuma Nelson. So a lot of things to pick out from there. You know, former IBF world welterweight champion Joshua Clotte is definitely saying that all young boxers coming up have a lot to learn from the professor. Well, uh, he did more than great. He did more than great. He beat uh, uh, most of the top uh, Mexican fighters. So he's the best. He's the living legend. So we have to celebrate him. He's a great fighter and uh, he has done well for the nation. I'm very happy about what he achieved. So we are happy for him. As long as he never stopped training. He always Okay, so once again, uh, wonderful celebrations there for Professor Azuma Nelson. And we can get back into football because Arsenal midfielder Mesut Ozil says he no longer wants to play international football for Germany. In a lengthy statement, the 29-year-old said treatment he had received from the German Football Association had made him no longer interested in playing for the side. German football expert Raphael Hogenstein has more. It had a certain degree of inevitability uh, around it. I think the lack of backing he's been receiving from the German FA in the wake of the scapegoating that uh, he's been subjected to in sections of the German media, but also on social media. And even to a certain extent, you could say by his own superiors, very painful day for German football on the whole. There had been public pressure on him to make a statement of some sort, but uh, Mesut Ozil feels that that has been a very inconsistent way of handling it, that he has not received the backing, unlike the backing he received from Joachim Löw, the Germany manager, and Oliver Bierhoff, the Germany team manager. Uh, the German FA on the whole, he feels, have not uh, stood up for him and he feels that no one's really taken his side in this and then ultimately has no, no option but to stop playing for Germany. So it's a good time now to catch up with what your favourite clubs are up to in pre-season. Here's Moses Yabwada up.
Christian Pulisic scored two and played a key role in the others. Borussia Dortmund defeated Liverpool 3-1 in the opening match of their US tour. The American teenager is admired by Jurgen Klopp and he stole the show on home soil to lead a German fight back in North Carolina. Manchester United continued their preparation for the 2018-2019 season with a goalless draw against San Jose Earthquakes at the Levy Stadium in California. The headline team news for United saw Alexis Sanchez named in the starting 11. Bayern Munich overcame a youthful Paris Saint-Germain to run out 3-1 victors in Saturday's fixture. Chelsea have arrived in Australia and at midday take on Perth Glory as part of their pre-season friendlies. Sarri has just replaced Antonio Conte as the club's head coach and it is expected to lead the Blues switching from a 3-4-3 formation to a 4-3-3. I beg Sarri, no long things. You are playing Pep Glory. Be glorified in that game. <laughs> Let's talk some Formula 1 action now. And Lewis Hamilton took a sensational victory in a thrilling rain hit German Grand Prix as Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel crashed out to give the Mercedes driver a 17-point lead in the championship battle. Jack Nichols was watching. It was the lowest a driver has won from on the grid since 2005. A superb performance from Lewis Hamilton. The early stages were fairly straightforward as he carved his way past the slower cars. But when the rain came out, he came into his own, lapping much quicker than everyone else. And his title rival, Sebastian Vettel, sliding off into the barriers. That means now he leads the championship by 17 points, having coming into the weekend trailed Vettel by eight points. A big turnaround in the championship, and the next race is just one week away in Budapest. Mm, now we have to talk about athletics. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to. I mean, talk about the African Athletic Championship because Kenya's Imano Korea ran the fastest 800 meters since the London 2012 Olympic final at the anniversary games. That Harry has more. Korea, only a semi finalist here at last year's Worlds, stopped the clock at 1.42.05. Not since David Radisha's world record at this same stadium in the 2012 Olympic final have we seen quicker. The world record holder, Kendra Harrison, won her showdown with Olympic gold medalist Brianna McNeil in their sprint hurdles. And Jamaica's latest track and field talent, the 20-year-old Akeem Bloomfield, took almost a fifth of a second off his personal best to win the 200 in 19.81. Luvo Manyonga, the world champion from South Africa, produced three 8-metre-50-plus long jumps in a row as he won that competition. 2012 Olympic champion Greg Rutherford finished in last place on his farewell appearance at a stadium where he will be forever associated with the events of Super Saturday. And of course, we have our eyes on everything that's happening in Algeria. The African Youth uh, Championship is ongoing and our teams are doing very well. More coming up. I know the swimming uh, later today will tell you a whole lot. I know the, uh, the beach volley teams is doing very well. So okay. it, it, it's really good, eh? Yes, <laughs> it's a good sport to watch, isn't it? Oh, yes, oh, beach. Yes, <laughs> beach volleyball. Uh, yeah, yeah, you oh. know, Kojo Yangsin and... Uh, Kofi Anza like to watch Serena Williams when she's doing tennis. Yeah, yeah, But beach yeah. is an entirely different level. Beach you volleyball I mean? is, yeah. I mean, the spirit around it, you know, I mean, and, and how athletic it's they compelling. get. It's it, compelling. It, it's compelling. <laughs> <laughs> And that was for you, Nana Kwadade Irinchi, oh, yes. head of multimedia sports. It's a chaotic sports It's director. a very, very chaotic sports director. He supports a chaotic team, Liverpool FC. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm going. <laughs> bye bye. Sorry. Pep Glory. Glorified. <laughs> that was George Adi Jr. He